This question comes from Vukosi uh, Lunguani. Vukosi, nice question. It deals with a cubic equation, but not just any equation, an equation where there's a root of multiplicity 2. So in other words, a repeated root. And if a root is repeated, we know the curve touches. So that repeated root is also the turning point. Let's read. The function f which lies over there is given to us. There's the equation of the function, and the function g of x is given, and there is its equation. They say the following. They want us to determine the value of, or the coordinates of point A, which is over there. So this question, yeah, 6.1, it's question 6. The coordinates of A, how can I find the coordinates of A, that point there. Well, that point is an x-intercept, okay? And this is also an x-intercept. So if I have f of x, and I write f of x down as x plus 1 all squared, that's your root of multiplicity 2, the factor is x plus 1 all squared, the root is at x equal to minus 1. Okay, so then I need, if I look at my equation there, I have an A and a C, but I know this is where I'm going to focus on. I'm going to focus on this constant. I must take this constant here, and I must multiply it, uh, the, the, the product of the two of those things together will give me the, um, the coordinates of point A. So I can look at that 2, or I can go to my line. Let me just get my pen there. My line also cuts the x-axis at that point. Okay, so it's going to be a better deal for us to use the line. Because we now know that this plus 1 times a minus 2 over there will indeed, and then we still don't know, because if you look at this cubic equation, there's an a involved here as well. So I'm going to move the a out. Okay, so there's our second point. So the point a will be 2 and 0. So there's two ways to look at it. You can look at it by considering the cubic, or you can use the fact that it's the x-intercept of the line. Either way, the point is 2, 0. Okay, let's see what the second part of the question is asking us. There's eight parts. The second part says, show by calculation, show that a is equal to 1 and that c is equal to minus 3. That's what we need to show. Okay, so let's see. To be able to show that, I need to do what? I have that as a repeated root and I have this as a y-intercept. Okay, so all I need to do now, I have got that but I do not know what A is. Okay, folks, don't just assume that A is 1. You've got to show it. Okay, you can't just assume this. So I'm going to use this point that they gave me over there, and I'm going to put it into this equation that I already have. So I'm going to say, okay, this is the point 0 and negative 2. So f of naught is minus 2. That's what I'm going to use. Now there's f of x with a still uh, unknown. a is not known. And that's what you have to bear in mind, is that there is a coefficient that can be a. They gave the equation that way. Okay, so if x is naught, the y value is 2, is equal to a times... 0 plus 1 is 1, and I square that answer. 0 minus 2 is minus 2, and look at that. The minus 2's cancel, and a is indeed a 1. Okay, so if a is a 1, and I now want to find the value of c, which is the middle term cx, I can now go to f of x. I can say, okay, that means that f of x is indeed equal to x plus 1 all squared multiplied by x minus 2 because now guaranteed the a value is 1. 
Now if I square that, I get x squared plus 2x plus 1. I still need to distribute it into the second bracket, which is x minus 2. So my final is going to be x to the power 3 plus 2x squared plus x minus 2x squared uh, minus 4x. And that multiplied by this is minus 2. I clean this up, I get x cubed. The 2x squared is gone. Minus 3x minus 2. And indeed, the c value is definitely minus 3. Oh, no. Look at this. Look at this. The equation was given as minus cx. Okay, so c cannot be minus 3. It has to be plus 3. Because if I put a minus 3 in here, it's going to give me plus 3x over there, the way they gave me the equation. Okay, so indeed, let me just make sure. Yes, they said c is minus 3. I think it's a little bit of a slip there because they did give it to us as minus cx. Okay, but we got to the answer, and that's what's important. So 6.3 is what they ask us next, is the coordinates of b, which is the turning point of f. Well, now, seeing that we have f at the point b, the derivative of f is naught, because it's a turning point. So at b, its derivative is zero. Now I go and I differentiate that, I get 3x squared minus 3, which is naught. That means that x squared is equal to 1. If I throw the 3 over 3 minus 3 divides away, and I have x as plus or minus 1. So that means there's two turning points, of which I already have the first one, where it's minus 1. So finally, the x-coordinate at point B is equal to positive 1. Did they ask us for the coordinates? Yes, so we need the y-coordinate as well. Okay, we need the second part. So we go back and we put 1 in here. We get 1, 1, minus 3, minus 2 gives us the y-value for B as minus 4. So the coordinates of B is the point 1 and negative 4 is our coordinate pair over there. Okay, so that's quite nice. 6.3 and it was for a full 3 marks. Now the next one is interesting for 7 marks. They're asking us, if I go back to the graph, they're asking us to show that if I join a line, you know, I'm going to just grab any line. If I draw a line through C and B, that that line there will be parallel to the y-axis. Mm. The y-axis has a horizontal, is a horizontal line. So it has a zero gradient, which means the change in y values is naught. So let's try and do this in the quickest way possible. If I look at the uh, coordinates for B, B we just found, it's 1 and minus 4. The coordinate at C we can also find. Let's see how do we do that. At, uh, I'm doing 6.4. So we have the B's coordinates here. We need to show that the Y coordinate of C is minus 4. Because then those two points are equidistant to the y-axis. What does that tell us? It tells us this line is as horizontal as what the x-axis will be. Sorry, I keep on saying the y-axis, the x-axis. Okay, for seven marks. So if those two y-values are indeed the same, then we've got a point. So what happens at point C? The cubic function x cubed minus 3x minus 2 is equal to the line x minus 2 at that point. 
Okay, so I now need to find the x value for which this happens. Now look at how beautifully this cleans itself up. There's a minus 2 and a minus 2. I kick the x over. Remember, I cannot cancel a common x. Okay, so I kick everything to the left. And what do I get? I get that x cubed minus 4x is equal to 0. Now I can remove a common x, so x is naught, or x squared minus 4 is naught. Now what does this do? This tells me that x is plus or minus 2. Now this is, there are three x values. This is what this answer is telling us, where the line will cross the cubic. Let's see if that's true. Let's look at the graph. There's the 1, there's the second one. So we have here the 1x is naught. There the x is 2. So the only value for x we can have here is the value of minus 2. It does indeed cut three times. So now we have a drum roll. What is the y value? Well, the y value will lie on the line, and the equation of the line is x minus 2. So all I need to do is put this x value in there, okay? So x minus 2, I'm going to put the minus 2 in there, and I have a minus 4. So what did I just show? I showed that c is the point 2 and minus 4. Earlier on, I found the point b to be, uh, it's minus 2 rather, to be the point 2 and minus 4. Those two y values are the same. So it means that delta y is naught. Therefore, B, C is horizontal. And what does that mean? Therefore, B, C, C is parallel to the x-axis, as they asked us to show quite nicely. Okay, so what did we do? We found that point of intersection. We found the y values proving that the y values are the same. This was a 7 mark answer. Showed us that delta y is naught. Okay, the next one. Find the x-coordinate of the point of inflection. I'm going to go back to the top here. So let's do 6.5 over here. The x-coordinate for the point of inflection. Now folks, remember, there's symmetry between the two stationary points. Now you don't have to do calculations here. There the x value was 2. Here the x value is minus 1. Okay, between those two turning points. This one wasn't 2. What am I saying? This one was point B and that was 1. So let me just get rid of that and put the 1 in there. Okay, I'm thinking of the root. So between the two lies x equal to naught. But if you don't want to take that chance, and rely on your intuition, you can take the derivative and differentiate it again. Okay, so you want to find out where's the second derivative equal to naught. Now folks, please, there's another way to do this. You can find x is minus b over 3a. Now the b value we know is minus 3, so it's plus 3 over 3 times a, and a is 1. Our b value, in fact, here is naught. It's not plus 3. It's the c value that's naught. So this is 3 times 1, which gives us naught. If you still don't trust me, we differentiated this. We got it over there. 3x squared minus 3. So the second derivative will be 6x, which is naught. So x is 0. So either way, it tells you where the point of inflection lies. It lies at the point where x is naught, so on the y-axis. Then that was for one mark. Hence write down the x values where the graph of f is concave upwards. The x values where the graph is concave upwards. Well, if it has its point of inflection, so in other words, here f prime prime x is definitely equal to zero, okay, then here it was dropping, dropping, and now it's increasing in gradient. Okay, so the result there 
it is for one mark. Okay, so you have the x value where the change happens. So 6.6 .6 where x is bigger than 0. So to the right of the point of inflection, this graph is concave upwards. It means it's a gradient is the, 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 the gradient of the gradient is indeed positive. Okay, for three marks, write down the values of k. Now, 6.7, they say, f of x is equal to k. For three marks, write down the values of k for which you will have one real root only on this curve. Okay, so let us go back and let's see. Our current y-intercept is minus 2. Okay, so if we kick the k over, we get minus 2 minus k. So we want to know what must, this, what must happen to this y-intercept so that the roots have, so that it has only got one real root. Now folks, the cubic, let me draw this. No, let's look at the graph. The cubic here, there. I'm going to try and draw it in one go so I can move it. Okay, there. Now I'm going to pick that. There has two real roots, but if I pick this and I move it down, can you see it only has one real root, which is over there? So what am I doing? I'm moving its y, its y value downwards so that it only cuts there. Or where it was, I must take it and move it up. Oopsie, so there's not enough space here to move. There we go. There. So that this turning point lies above the x-axis. Then it has one real root on the negative side. So what needs to happen here? That is what we need to ask ourselves. Okay, so we currently have, so I'm going to throw this over, and I'm going to work with f of x minus k equals naught, minus k rather there. Okay, and then I'm only going to work with a y-intercept because k doesn't have an x with it. So I'm talking about what is the k value for the new y-intercept. Okay, so currently my y-intercept that I had there was minus 2. So minus 2 minus k. Now what was it? The y-intercept was negative 2. So it's got to be less than negative 2. So what's going to happen here? If I throw that over, I get minus k, which is less than 0, which means k must be bigger than 0. And that is my first result that I get to. Okay, but there's a second result. Remember, my other turning point was at minus 4. So if I just quickly draw, I don't want to go up and down here now. There we go. This point here was at minus 4 at the y value. So, and the, the y-intercept was at minus 2. So that y-intercept there, okay, must be, it must move up 4 units. Because this point, this graph translates up 4 units. So I need to add 4 to this side. Now if I add 4 to this, it goes to 2. Then this touches and that cuts. So it's got to be bigger than 2. Okay, folks. So what do I do? I add 4 to get there. So the new y-intercept will also add 4 and will lie at 2. So the new y-intercept must be bigger than 2. That means that minus k has to be bigger than 4, which means k must be smaller than negative 4. So k is either bigger than 0 or k is smaller than negative 4 for us to have one real root to this equation.